to uh, Workout Wednesday, and uh, and we're doing this again on Wednesday morning as uh, Gannon's come in and dropped all the kids off for school and uh, and living the life of 2020. So, uh, uh, good morning, welcome. We're glad that you're with us today. And uh, Espen, how's your day starting off? Good. Good. Ready to work out? Yeah, I call the shots. Have you guys been doing your uh, morning miles, though? Not yet. No. Well, we're gonna start that. It's getting cooler. Yeah. So we'll start that at seven. We'll get a sweat in before we come over here to Angie's School of Rock and Education. I love how last night it was like 78 degrees and uh, the kids, well, all your kids yesterday were wearing jeans yeah. because it was like 78 and windy. And uh, and that's still pretty warm to me. So, uh, well, hey, uh, it's a great day. We actually have a little bit of a special edition here because we have an announcement coming out today for Rock Harbor that is uh, really exciting. Um, you know, just sit next to Gannon to, to share this announcement, I think is perfect because the reality is the church started mostly in their home. Um, I would say 80% of the events that we had for the first yeah. year of the church were in your house. Yeah. And uh, it's nice you got a big turnaround driveway. And uh, we did a couple things at some of the community center stuff um, with, with um, Melbourne Beach. But a lot of stuff was in his home and the church has continued to grow. We've had a great relationship with Gemini, but as people know, uh, being inside public schools right now is a little bit different than it used to be. And it's a little bit harder than it used to be. So God has opened up some amazing doors. And what's amazing about it is, is we didn't ask this. We just built relationships with local churches. And then Pastor Rick of Advent Luther and I started taking prayer walks together. And, uh, and then they've come and they've approached us about an idea of two churches partnering together in one location. And uh, so we're officially announcing today that uh, on August 4th, which is also our birthday party, uh, we are gonna begin having services at Advent Church in uh, um, Melbourne Beach. So again, what, what do you feel about this whole moving into uh, having a, a church building for us? What's that mean for you? Well, I think it gives us uh, an anchor a rock consistency. Um, I mean, I love it, but, but honestly, I loved it having uh, worship and prayer in my living room outside in our uh, pool deck, uh, in the community center by the river, outside. I mean, if you think about it, man, Jesus was the church. He didn't have one place to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, to me, as, as long as we have somewhere to uh, fellowship and, and be together as a community and get fed by you and the, and the worship team, I'm okay with it. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, what a great building. Uh, I could walk to it. Yeah. So I like it. We can walk to the school too. And yeah, that's true. That's true. And it's so many things we can do with that building. Yeah. You know what I mean, so, uh, but I think it's a testament to you and the church and the, uh, you know, the seeds that you've been planted in this community and whatever you give to something, it gives back to you in the same measure that you give. So it's just a testament to what you guys have been doing in the last year and a half because it hasn't been that long, man. No. So actually I was, I was going to, uh, use Espen for one more uh, question there is uh, we've okay. got the Kona truck coming on that service because it's our one year birthday of officially having services. So last year in August, we did two services. September, we went weekly and then our official launch was in mm -hmm. uh, on October 5th. And so October 4th of this year is our uh, our one year birthday of an yeah. official church. And so we're going to have Kona truck there and uh, the ice cream. Uh, it's the shaved ice. Shaved ice. And they've got a... a Hawaiian ice. A, yeah, Hawaiian ice. They've got a sanitary cool. way of doing that. And then we actually have custom cups that say one year of Rock Harbor. That's, and they, that's they, big time. Yeah, they change uh, um, green to blue when they get cold. Yeah. And so it's just a fun... So everyone can get one. Yeah. Um, whether you want the Hawaiian ice or not, everyone can get a cup. Um, I've got some other surprises that we're working on. But uh, I think what you shared was just the same way that I feel. And that is that... Um, as, as exciting as I am about this opportunity, uh, we, we thought that we were going to be in Gemini for at least a few years. Yeah. And, and that gave us a great place to be the church that wasn't in a church. Yeah. And, uh, and that was good. And uh, we really liked that. It's just the past two Sundays, we've gotten extremely lucky that we uh, didn't get blown yeah. out because um, we're talking like wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour yeah. and uh, rain uh, pouring down all around and before and after but that little window of church yeah. uh, has actually been pretty good here the past few weeks and so the only thing was missing was your rod 
What? The only thing that was missing was your staff because you definitely were Moses, man. You kind of oh yeah. God helped you part. And uh, there's, no, there's no, I haven't experienced any bugs since we've been out there. Oh yeah, yeah. I've never even thought of them because yeah. they've well. I don't think uh, no CMs can fly in 40 mile per hour wind. Those yeah. little things I think probably go away. Yeah. So well, before the services though, you know, it was just a little hot, but no, I didn't have any bugs or anything. Yeah. No, we no. said the wind was better than uh 92 and uh zero yeah. wind. Yeah. So we been blessed, man. Hey, speaking of Gemini, um, I just got off the phone uh, with Ms. Julian and the one thing that I just wanted to kind of re reiterate that I had said in an email was that our commitment to Gemini is not going down um, at all. That we are as committed to caring for our community, and that really has included a lot of caring for our local elementary school, the only school kind of in our area here. Um, and then we've got Indy Atlantic uh, Elementary, and then we have served Hoover Middle School. So those are a lot of our core churches here, um, or I'm sorry, schools here, is that we're still committed to them. In fact, our sound system that is going into the new sanctuary is going to be semi-permanent so we can still pull it out and use it hopefully again there are dances you, you can take Kiana back to the father daughter dance at gemini again yeah. and and uh and enjoy that so our commitment isn't changing uh we just did the umbrellas re recently uh this is actually one of the this is we had to melt through like what two and a half inches of plastic and it was like guys pouring water like we're doing like some crazy you know experiment to, to be able to cut the holes to put in 12 umbrellas so the kids could eat outside um, and not just be indoors with the coronavirus uh, restrictions. And so, you know, we're continuing to love that school, love our community. And unfortunately, we, we, we got some issues to pray about. Um, there's been staff members who have gotten injured. Um, there have been uh, kids whose uh, parents have gotten um, ill, uh, very ill. And then we just found out in the past 24 hours that one of our uh, favorite teachers, and I hesitate to say that because we love all the teachers, but um, I consider Brian, uh, Mr. Meisenberg, a personal friend, uh, a person that I've spent a lot of time talking with and, and really a guy who's gone above and beyond um, to be a good teacher with creativity and just joy of teaching music to kids. Mm -hmm. um, we found out in the past 24 hours that he has stage four um, colon cancer. And um, uh, a word that we've been hearing way too much recently, especially for guys our age. And um, yeah. so we just want to pray for him. And then we're going to get into our uh, teaching and our, and our scripture for today. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so thankful that um, you haven't just called us to be a church, but you've called us to be a church in a certain place. So God, the fact that we're here in this community, um, caring for a school like Gemini is not even a thought. It's, um, it's the purpose behind why we're here. So God, we just want to lift up uh, Gemini right now that is uh, already um, going through such a difficult 2020 year, uh, a school year that ended short. Um, teachers didn't get a chance to say goodbye, and now they've come back into a whole new world of how to do school. Uh, there have been staff and faculty that have gotten injured. There have been parents that have um, gotten sick. Um, there are kids who are hurting. And now we find out that um, a beloved teacher um, Mr. Brian Meisenberg has uh, been diagnosed with stage four colon cancer, um, a cancer that's requiring surgery um, immediately. God, just uh, we look at all this, and in some ways, it was just like, okay, uh, when is enough enough? Um, you know, when is this going to stop? And it just seems like a year that things just haven't stopped. So, Lord, we, we want to lift up uh, Mr. Meisenberg and his young children and his wonderful wife, Lord, and just have you put your arms around them and love them and care for them. God, I pray for the staff that is just, again, just having to deal with something difficult. And God, just please, just right now, in the name of Jesus, just um, lift up the shoulders of uh, the principal, Ms. Julian, who is just having to take on more than any teacher should have to take on in one year or any principal should have to take on in a lifetime. It seems like in this year. So God, we just pray a blessing um, that you can just have your healing powers upon Mr. Meisenberg and upon that school and um, for the other kids whose moms and, and dads are hurting. And uh, and Lord, just bring healing powers upon that place. Um, God, I pray that we can continue just to pray the Holy Spirit into that space, even if we can't physically do it on the property every Sunday, that we can find a way to still be there, be present and bring your spirit in. So Lord, just thank you for uh, 
the opportunity you've given us to be here at this time. There's a reason why you called Rock Harbor to come to this community at this time, not because it was going to be the easiest year to do a church plant, but because I believe you knew that this community needed a church like Rock Harbor right now. So God, we praise you in all of this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So Gan and I are going to uh, read through um, and share my favorite devotional of all time. And uh, it's uh, My Utmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers. In fact, I like him so much that uh, once we get our hospitality set back up as a, as a church, we've got numerous copies right next to the Bibles that people can take and leave. Um, but I use um, utmost.org, which is just uh, a great, uh, easy website to go to. And they do, just so you know, they've got a classic and they've got an updated language. The classic is like, it's not old English, but it's like 1850s English. Hmm. So it's a little bit different. I actually have the kids read it some and I teach them new words every time. But we're looking at the classic version today. And uh, and this is the teaching for to, uh, yesterday. And uh, so one that we just read last night. So this is a September 22nd message, the missionary's master and teacher. And I think we're going to kind of say that the missionary's master teacher and coach is kind of how we're going to look at this today. John 13, 13 and 16 says, you call me teacher and Lord. And this was Jesus speaking. And you say, well, for so am I. I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master. Now, to give you some context of John 13, that was Jesus talking. And, and he was referring to his relationship, actually, with, the, with, with God. And so, you know, this understanding of where Jesus was a servant to his master. And, and he was actually, when he was here in the incarnate, he was following God as well. Now, let me read the first paragraph. To have a master, a teacher, a coach is not the same thing as being mastered and taught. Having a master and teacher means that there is someone who knows me better than I know myself, who is closer than a friend and who understands the remoteness depths of my heart and is able to satisfy them fully. It means having someone who has made me secure and the knowledge that he has met and solved all the doubts, uncertainties, and problems in my mind. To have a master and teacher in this and nothing less. And it says in Matthew 23, 8, for one is your teacher, the Christ. And so Oswald is bringing back in our relationship with Jesus and how he is our one teacher. He is our one master. He is our one coach of, of eternal life. And, and that is Jesus Christ. So again, do you want to share some of your reflections when you just kind of take that first paragraph in? Yeah, I mean, I'm a teacher and I'm a coach. And so I have many, many students that I'm trying to sow into. And so, you know, for them to get better at basketball, they have to go to a source that has more information, more experience than them. And so they get plugged into the source that I have. If they don't, then they can't get the information to be successful. Because to me, you can only rise and be successful uh, above the information you have. You can't rise above the information that you have. And so that's, I mean, God is our life source. You know, he created this. He gave us a playbook in the Bible. And, you know, we can't think ourselves above him because, you know, he, he's, he created the earth. He created us. He created our destiny. He knows our will. And so if we want to plug into that and stay on the right track and learn how to play this game of life, you know, we got to talk to our coach, who's, who's God, who, who is Jesus. We got to talk to him through prayer and the Holy Spirit. And we got to use the playbook, which is the Bible. So it's the same, it's, you know, so I connect to it real well, since that's kind of what I do for a living. And I always tell kids, you know, obedience comes before freedom. You know, if they want the freedom to score and the freedom to uh, have more opportunities, whatever their goals are, that's great. But you got to be obedient first. And I think that's where, you know, he loves us and he cares for us and he gives us favor because we don't deserve it, no question. But if we want the blessings, you know, we have to put in the work and, and be obedient to his word. Yeah. Yeah, there's a reason why, like, Coach K is picked to coach the uh, Team USA in the Olympics. 
is because is that idea of you've got to find a coach that's even above where the players are at. And, uh, and he has seen it. It says here, um, it means having someone who has made me secure in the knowledge that he has met and solved all doubts. Um, you know, when Coach K something, says something, there's not a player on the earth who would question um, the advice that he's giving or if it's in a game and he calls a timeout and he says, hey, here's what they're doing and we're going to do this. Yeah. Um, you know, if there were some other coaches, if I was in that huddle and, and I try to tell LeBron James, um, hey, James, I want you to um, stand in the corner and for the final shot and we're going to set up um, Shaq to shoot a three-pointer, mm -hmm. um, he might look at me and, and say unkind words. Yeah. Um, but Coach K is going to say percent. something – and, and he's going to, whatever he says, they're going to follow. And so I think that's a great understanding here is understanding God is our master teacher and coach. And you keep on bringing the word into that as well. And I appreciate that as our playbook is uh, that he has seen this, that he knows this. And not just as he's seen it before, not just as he knows in the moment, but he also uh, knows what our future was, is going to be in that. Yeah. And so it's just that complete trust that we can go to him. And, uh, and, and even Jesus is saying, you call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so am I. And I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, that Jesus, when he was here on earth, understood his place. He understood the importance of going to yeah. God, being in prayer, and doing all of that. The first uh, sentence continues in the second paragraph. To have a master and teacher is not the same thing as being mastered and taught. And he kind of brings that up again here in this little paragraph. Our Lord never takes measures to make me do what he wants. Sometimes I wish God would master and control me to make me do what he wants, but he will not. And at other times, I wish he would leave me alone, and he does not. Wow. And I just think that's great. And so I've had a chance to see Gannon coach a lot when it comes to filming um, individual workouts. And the one thing that I notice is that you aren't creating puppets, right. but you are – all of your workouts are pretty situ uh, situational. Yeah. And and even in the workout that you do a dozen times, I uh, think about the one where, where you stood in front with your back to the player, he had his hand on your back, and he didn't know what you were going to do exactly. So yeah. he had to make that step. He had to go. Yeah. And you were preparing him because in the game, the situations are fluid. Yeah. You know, great point because I think <clears throat> to, to, to have a good player or an athlete – First, you give them information of what to think. You know, you define situations, you define fundamentals, actions, and then it's about getting them, uh, you teach them how to think. You teach them to react, to read, react, to make decisions instinctively and, and fluidly, fluidly so that, um, you know, you win the game. Yeah. And so the Bible teaches us what to think, but God lets us make our own choices and as a coach as a human being as a parent you know we can foster an environment of success but we cannot control how that child feels nor can we control how that child thinks and the more we can teach them to have ownership and make the decision on their own the more genuine and authentic and real and and more joy they're going to be at um you know, attacking life. And so, I mean, for us, that's what God does. He gives us the, 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 the blueprint, but it's up to us to follow it. And if we do, that shows that we love him and that we trust him. And as a coach, you know, when I read that paragraph, I only have so many timeouts. Mm -hmm. It might be five, six, seven in a game. You can't call a timeout every time a player makes a mistake. You have to let them fail, recover and then get to the other play because in basketball, you can play both ends, offense and defense. Mm -hmm. So in basketball, a lot, we're teaching, look, it's a game of mistakes. You're going to make a mistake, but repent, forgive yourself quickly, and then go back on the other end and play. And I think that's what that's another lesson that God's teaching us is, is that, you know what, I, I can't control every little thing that you do, but I can give you a will and through your discernment. I can give you my will and through discernment and wisdom. And solitude every day, like we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. Now we we find out exactly what he wants us to do, and we make that choice because we trust him and love him, and we do it. Yeah, I think a powerful sentence here is, and at other times I wish he would leave me alone, and he does not. And we've all had that game, or we just know we're not playing our best. We know we've made mistakes, and like in basketball, it's, you call a timeout. 
Or I think about for, for some reason for me the worst was like when when there's a foul and everyone's hitting to the foul line and you're almost trying to hide and you hear your name, the coach points down yeah. and you have to go stand next to him while everyone else is over there and you get that nice one on one timeout. Sure. I couldn't imagine having like twenty thousand fans out there and and uh, and knowing that you're being called yeah. right here. Um, but it's not that he's want, wanting to scold you, but I did get to see Bobby Knight live a couple times, and uh, oh yeah, he scolded, and he scolded. Yeah, uh, I don't think I would send my son to play for him. Um, no. But uh, uh, I wonder if God scolds people like that. If he scolds us, yeah, in heaven. I wonder if he. Well, you opened up a door to something that uh, Church of the Highlands talks a lot about that, and that is the second judgment. That it does say in Scripture that even Christians, our salvation is is brings us into the presence of God, um, but there is a second judgment that we are held accountable yeah. um, for what we have done with what God has given us. And uh, and so I'm not sure, you know, at the same time, it's a place of love and grace. Yeah. Um, probably not going to be like Bobby Knight. Probably not going to be like Bobby Knight. That's, that's what yeah, I'm, yeah. Okay. A little bit more that motto, something like that. Thank yeah. you. We're going to get judged, but it's going to be gracefully. Yeah, he's not going to kick anything at us. Um, you call chairs. Yeah. I was actually at the game when um, – the uh, Ohio State student section started making an inappropriate chant towards the Hoosiers wow. in reference to family members. And uh, and he went over in the middle of the game with my dad, microphone. grabbed the microphone and started that. yelling at the uh, fans. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was St. John's Arena. My dad and I, our, our tickets were so high up that the camera on the, on the floor had like a switch to a light bulb like right next to our head. So when they would take a picture, this oh. giant flash would go off. And I think it was actually below where we were sitting oh. up in the rafters, but that place had some good basketball. Yeah. Jerry Lucas, in fact, yeah. I got something right here that not many people have ever seen that my dad held on to. And this is from the uh, the 1962 um, national champion Ohio State Buckeyes that had John Havlicek, okay. Jerry uh, Lucas, yep. and if you look down there, Bob Knight, Bob Knight Jim wow. Dotty, uh, Dick Taylor. Wow. So this is a little thing that's been held on to for a long time, but somehow I stole from my dad so I could have it. You know, you know, we're in Florida country, man, so we bring up Ohio State a lot, so we got to start bringing up some uh, University of Florida Gator stories and analogies and history. Well, I got one Gator story for you, and that was the, uh, the year that Florida beat Ohio State twice in national championship games. Once in football, when we had the great Troy, Troy Smith as quarterback with yeah. Tegan Jr. as the wide receiver. Yeah. And then um, that's when we had uh, – who is the big ugly dude from uh, Ohio State? Greg Oden. Nice. I hope Greg Oden's not watching. but He's a super nice guy. <laughs> super great guy. He's a good player. Seven-footer. Yeah, but he, looked like, he looked like an 83-year-old man when he was 12 he years old. He did. Yeah. And uh, who was our uh, – uh, Connolly was our uh, – Point guard Michael right Conley, lefty, yeah. Yeah, so uh, good players. And then we lost to uh, Florida, and Angie had a bet. And who was the dude from Florida that had a, he's had a good career in the NBA? Um, Not the best-looking guy either. Real King Noah? Yeah. yeah. So I her, worked him out. So she had clients in Florida, right. and uh, and the, the losing bet had to put an 8 by 10 picture of either Noah or Odin oh. on their desk. Well, Angie lost, oh, and Florida God. beat us a second time in the same year. So she had to have a picture of uh, Joaquin Noah, eight by ten, sit on her desk for the next month. Nice, yeah. Big fat head before the fat heads. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I don't know how we got off track about master and servant and everything, but you know, ESPN morning with our coffee here. That's right. Teacher, here. master, and lord and coach have little place in our vocabulary, and that's why we're bringing the coach into it. Is because for us to say master and lord is is something we don't say a lot. But to think about God in a coach position is what we're trying to actually do here. We prefer the words savior, sanctifier, and healer. The only word, and I think what, what he's trying to say here is we can actually choose these religious words and then there's a disconnect from the reality of what God's trying to do in our lives is what yeah. I believe. Yeah. The only word that truly describes the experience of being mastered is love. And we know little about love as God and we know little about love as God reveals it in his word. The way we use the word obey is proof of this. In the Bible, obedience is based on a release relationship between equals. For example, that a son with his father. 
Our Lord was not simply God's servant. He was his son. And through his son, yet he learned obedience, according to Hebrews 5, 8. That was a quote. If we are consciously aware that we are being mastered, that idea itself is proof that we have no master. If that is our attitude towards Jesus, we are far away from having the relationship he wants us to have. He wants us in a relationship where he is so easily our master and teacher that he, have, he has no conscious awareness of it. A relationship where all we know is that we are his to obey. So coach, if we just close this out, mm. you've seen players who didn't get it and you kept on telling them and finally they listened and then it just began to happen without them thinking. Correct. Yeah. And, and that's the whole spiritual process that, and this is, what we, this is why we call these workout Wednesdays, our salvation is an immediate moment where God takes our sins yeah. and forgives them, but we have the opportunity to continue to work out and train to be yeah. disciples of Jesus. Yeah, you know, greatness is consistency. I got that from LeBron James after a workout. You know, I asked him, how do you become a champion? He's like, over time. So for us to be a champion in Christ, for us to really understand God's will for our lives, you know, for our life, you know, it's a marathon. It's a daily habitual uh, thing where you have to get into the word. You have to get into with, with wise counsel. You, you like your sermon on Sunday. You know, you have to get into the Holy Spirit. You have to get into prayer time. You have to continue to practice good habits. And with basketball or any sport or anything, I mean, repetition is the mother of success. And you, they, you have to be able <clears throat> to continue to find different ways to connect to that student. A lot of my teaching techniques, some of them don't always work. And so you got to keep finding different ways to get, connect, different ways to get them to buy in. You know, to me, I'm a, I'm a holistic teacher. It, it's physical, mental, emotional, and I'm, you know, I'm bringing the spiritual. And the spiritual, even though a lot of it's basketball or sports, and a lot of coaches feel... There's, there needs to be a barrier there, a separation of church and state, whatever. To me, that spiritual is the most important because if players and people don't have peace, they have nothing. If they don't, they don't have hope, they don't have a future. If they don't have passion, right, they don't have stamina and power. And, and that to me, all that is spiritual. You know, that endurance that Jesus not only preached about, but demonstrated. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, so that last paragraph is everything, man. It's, it's, it's that relationship and if it, you know coaching is relationships leadership teaching um is that you know the main thing after information and execution is 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 relationships man can you build a relationship to where not only do you influence that student right where you give them the information they respect it they hear it but then you change behavior not because you have to be because you want to and to me i think that shows our love and obedience to God because he is not controlling us. Yeah, he'll take a time out and get our attention. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you know, we have that free will that he gives everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You, you've, you've had that, that student who comes to your, uh, your workouts, comes to your um, coaching clinics, and they've got the notebook there, and they're, they're sitting there, and they're taking notes, and they, they say, oh, man, that's great. That's, that's fantastic. And then when it comes to actually performing – they forget it all. Yeah. You know, I think that's that, that, that love is just giving that respect to God that you're going to take what he's given you and apply it. So yeah. now I enjoyed this. This was fun, man. Thank you for uh, being with us yeah. this morning and thank you uh, for being a part of this. And uh, if this has meant something to you, please leave a message. Um, you can do a direct message or you can leave a chat there and we'd love to hear from you. But again, would you pray us another week? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Heavenly father, it's an honor that we can, uh, come here today and speak to so many people through technology you know although we uh do not enjoy the coronavirus we know that that gives us uh different avenues and different uh creative ways to get your word out because your word is is uh, what we build our life on you are the word you are the way the truth and the life and we we appreciate that you can give us the discernment and the wisdom to speak life to so many people as we go on the rest of the week may you cover us may you bless us may you face shine upon us that we do your will and that we continue to be great students and that we continue to lift you up as teacher, as Lord, as master. And we thank you for this. You're amazing, Jesus. And we thank you, God, for loving us and forgiving us. And uh, as Kevin mentioned, there's many, many people hurting. And so shine your light on them. May you do a miracle mm -hmm. uh, within that sickness, within that hurt, because we know that you have a plan for us. We don't always see it, 
but we trust and we uh, we have faith that you will help us overcome it. Uh, in your mighty name, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. All right. Thank you. Send Florida stories so Kevin can have some intel, not always talk about a Ohio State. Well, Florida starts playing basketball sooner, or football, yeah. sooner than we do, so we can cheer for the Gators. Gators, Florida State, Miami, UCF, good teams. It's, I can't cheer for Florida State. I, you know, we're, we're Floridians, man. I know, but I drove all the way from Sarasota to New Orleans on New Year's Eve and watched, um, who's that kid's name? Charlie. Charlie Ward. Charlie Ward destroy Ohio yeah. State at the Sugar Bowl. I played against Charlie Ward in college. We played basketball, too. Amazing I, don't have a, I don't have a grudge against him. That happened years ago, man. Let it go. I know. <laughs> Let it go, man. We, we, we're in Florida now. we got to cheer for some Florida teams. And the Knights looks good. They scored. The who? The UCF Knights. That's oh. our local team. Yeah. They're looking good. Yeah. All right. See you later. Thank you.